Animals can communicate in lots of different ways, from birds singing to one another, to great big stags showing off their physical prowess. But did you know they can also communicate in lots of ways that humans can't detect? In this video, I'm going to show you eight secret ways that animals can communicate with each other. I'm going to start with a form of communication that is on the very edge of being detectable by humans, ultrasound in bats. Whilst they use echolocation and frequencies undetectable by us to navigate, they also communicate using calls both within and outside of the frequencies we can hear. Some species of bat have strict social structures and communicating using ultrasonic sound allows them to stay in touch with one another whilst not drawing attention from potential predators who cannot hear them. The next form of communication comes from another mostly nocturnal flying creature but it's definitely not detectable by humans. Some female moths release pheromones from their abdomens when they are ready to mate. These travel in the air, sometimes for more than three miles, and can be detected by males using special antennae on their heads. When they detect a female, they'll head upwind to try to find her, changing the direction of their flight within milliseconds if the strength of the pheromone in the air changes. Some researchers think that they may be able to compare the strength of the pheromones between each antennae and use the slight differences to pinpoint their potential mate's exact location. People wishing to survey moths have taken advantage of this behaviour and sometimes use pheromone lures in moth traps to try to attract them. The next type of communication I'd like to share with you is both out of sight but also in sight at the same time. It's the ultraviolet colouring of some species of bird. Both starlings, which appear fairly plain to the human eye, and great tits, who are quite colourful, have an ultraviolet colouring that makes them stand out much more to one another. They use this to help them select their mates, but also to decide which chicks to feed. Weaker chicks have less ultraviolet reflectiveness, and in times where food is in short supply, they'll prioritise feeding the healthy chicks first as they have a better chance of surviving. Scent marking is a very useful way for territorial species to communicate without bumping into one another, such as otters. Whilst you could argue that humans can often smell the clues left behind, we don't have any idea what the message is that's being conveyed. Otters scent mark by leaving scat, urine and a secretion from glands near their anus. This is often on prominent waterside features rocks, tree roots and islands and allows them to pass on lots of information such as their age, health, sex and their breeding condition. Otters territories can cover more than 20 miles of water so by leaving these clues behind they can protect or even invite neighbours into their space without physically being there. The next communicator is the smallest that I'm going to feature, the ant. Ants can communicate using pheromones, but I'm not going to focus on that. Instead, I'm going to talk about vibrations. They have very sensitive hairs on their legs that can detect tiny vibrations and use this to send messages to one another. In order to create vibrations, the ants will either tap on surfaces or on the ground using their legs and mandibles, or by stridulating, by rubbing two of their legs together rapidly to create vibration. The meaning of these vibrations isn't fully understood yet, but it's thought that they can be used to send messages about food sources, nest construction and potential danger. The next type of communication also sends a message of potential danger, but it isn't done deliberately. Minnows release an alarm pheromone from specialised skin cells if they are injured. Other fish can smell this within the water and will start to display anti-predator behaviour such as seeking sheltered spots and forming tighter shoals. Scientists used to believe that this pheromone, which is called Shrekstoff, could only be sensed by members of the same species as the injured fish, but now they suspect it may actually be sensed by distantly related fish, giving another reason for prey fish to form mixed species shoals. I've already spoken about ways that some species leave their calling cards for other animals. Well, the muntjac has a very unique way of doing this. They have glands on their face that can manually open and close. When these are open, the muntjac will rub them on twigs 
or even on each other to leave a scent mark behind. This scent has a lot of information within it, including their health, age and sex, and sometimes the muntjac will even lick their own glands, perhaps to learn their own scent. The last type of communication I'm going to speak about is probably the most fascinating of them all. During the springtime, common frogs gather in their breeding pools. Usually the males arrive first, and as the females turn up, males will jostle to grab hold of them around the waist. This grip is known as amplexus, and although it may look that way, they are not actually mating. Male frogs have special pads on their thumbs and use this to inject the hormone into the females, which is known as amplexin. This lets her know it's time to release her eggs, and as she does so, the male will fertilize them before the jelly that they are covered in swells up. And how was that? Were any of them surprising to you? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.